Ooh, we got Jim Freeberg coming in. Recording in progress. And Jim is chiming in, and I'd like to say welcome, everybody, to the February edition of the Westside Computer Club. We're going to have our open forum, and then we'll go into our topic for tonight, which is games. What games do you play? Uh, so with that being said, who'd like to open up the floor with the first question of the evening? I know Beata's got lots of questions. She's got so many computer problems that she can't figure them all out. Beata, you got to have something for us. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I, I need somebody to come here and hold my hand and show me, you know, bit by bit. <laughs> you know, your husband would not like us holding your hand, okay? He gets a little <laughs> jealous about that. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, Harry, you got any questions? Making sure Harry's awake. There he is. I'm here. Um, no, not particularly. Not particularly. I'm curious what you're going to come up with for games since I hardly ever play games on a computer anymore. Ah, okay. Well, it looks like we might be jumping into that subject tonight, huh? Pretty early. Uh, so, questions for the evenings for the group. Nobody's got anything. Nobody's bought anything that's not working right. Oh, I finally got enough parts uh, to start building a computer that took five or six years to uh, get around to. Well, by the time you get it built, it's going to be totally obsolete. You might as well not bother. It, it was probably already obsolete uh, uh, several years back. Yeah, and if it doesn't have the TPM2 chip, what's the point? It's uh, uh, got a CPU chip that has uh, uh, the uh, TPM2 uh, uh, capability. All you got to do is have your updated BIOS flip a switch, and it's uh, uh, all compliant. It's running 11 supported right now. Wow, that sounds great. It's not in a box, though. I mean, uh, uh, the motherboard's sitting on a, a, a board with a power supply next to it, a desktop one. Uh, it's got a, a, a video card plugged in so I can have video. Uh, apparently, the onboard uh, stuff has some kind of an issue which is not unusual on motherboards and uh, outside of that i've got a ryzen 7 2700x in it and 16 gigs of memory and right now i don't care about the uh storage it happens to be a two and a half inch uh ssd but uh i have on order a uh M.2 NVMe uh, uh, drive that I'll be sticking in, and then I'll clone it over. So you're going to clone it from the, the standard SSD to the MD? Yeah. I do that. It's just like having two of exactly the same drives uh, uh, doesn't matter. The only right. difference is, uh, uh, let's say that uh, uh, the two and a half inch was a 512 meg uh, uh, drive and the uh, uh, m.2 was a 256 gigabyte the first thing you'd have to do in the uh, uh, two and a half inch is shrink it down so that everything fits within uh, less than 256 so you have uh, over provisioning space unformatted uh, raw uh, space and that's it. Just clones right over. Then you uh, can disconnect uh, uh, the uh, two and a half inch after rebooting and uh, should come up on the uh, SSD M.2 drive. Piece of cake. I've what software so are you going to use to do the cloning? Uh, Macroom Reflect. And I could use uh, uh, also two uh, 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 Clonezilla, <coughs> Rescuezilla. Uh, our clone might be a possibility, but I haven't looked into that one yet. There's a, a GUI front end for it, uh, but the developer of our clone hasn't uh, modified his software for at least a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. But it works fine. People are using it. 
So you're going to leave the SSD internal, the, the, NVMe, the, the M.2, you're going to leave internal. Right. You're going to boot to the SSD and then run Macrium Reflect and then port, then clone it over? Yep. Is that your workflow? That's right. After I, okay. if, if I have to shrink it, I have to do that first. Then I use either uh, Minitool or I use uh, free version or I use uh, Gparticle and boot off of a bootable flash drive to do the partitioning uh, change. It's similar okay. to what uh, we would have uh, uh, done had you been around, uh, uh, especially when I started up the Linux SIG. So if this is a new machine, why don't you just load the OS from scratch? I already did on the 2.5-inch. Mm -hmm. That's how I know it's running 11 perfectly. I just added uh, uh, this late this afternoon uh, um, a lot of the application but, programs. Well, I'm asking why 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 bother going through the steps of cloning, shrinking, and cloning? Just reload the OS on the new drive. This way, that you know I, it's. I can, being... Well, yeah, but I uh, can do it either way. It, uh, uh, it's my option, and I uh, just uh, tend to uh, want to do uh, uh, the clone because I already went through the pain of uh, uh, setting up 11 and uh, uh, setting up the programs, etc. Okay. As far as games... And is this, is this uh, an internal computer or is this a client's computer? Oh, it's mine. It's, okay. What do you plan on doing on this machine? At the moment, uh, uh, mostly experimenting uh, uh, because there's been some uh, past issues with uh, Ryzen, uh, uh, but I think uh, that was with the OS, uh, uh, and it was in 2021, but so far what I'm seeing seems to work fine, but i got to do some more experiments with it. I've still got to uh, uh, take this thing and plug it into a, a box, uh, which I've already got, uh, I've got a couple other parts uh, besides the SSD on order uh, coming in. I should have those uh, by sometime next week. And where do you order your your parts from? Mostly out of eBay. eBay, okay. Almost there, uh, all my stuff I uh, uh, get out of uh, eBay. Uh, it takes a little finesse uh, uh, to learn how to do uh, successful bidding which i uh, try and do uh some but when i really want something bad i just do a buy it now well why not go to a company like newegg uh i've uh, uh, i done newegg before in the past uh, uh, i had a little bit of problem with them but uh, uh, i don't bad mouth them i use micro center once in a while uh, locally, either the Chicago or uh, Westmont, and I uh, have occasionally used Amazon too. But uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, for Amazon, you're mostly buying from the same vendors that are on eBay. And uh, sometimes some people uh, using the third-party vendors through Amazon have had problems, even though Amazon, like uh, uh, PayPal, will take care of you, usually. It's just one of those things. On games, uh, uh, I haven't played Solitaire in God knows when. If and when I uh, uh, decide to break... You're jumping it. ahead. You're jumping ahead on oh. topics. We're not on games yet. All right. <laughs> we're still going through an open forum from here, which we're going to jump the games probably pretty quick. As soon as we got, we're waiting for Tom O'Connor to ask us that last question. What well, last question yeah. was it? <laughs> I know what question you have. You have a problem over there, but we just haven't figured out what the question was to go with the problem. Well, I got Okay. But what can I say? I, I had. Uh, a problem trying to figure out what I was going to use on an airliner for uh, my headphones because I have a USB connection for headphones, but on an airliner you have to have uh, the standard plug-in for 
the old radio or something well, like that. Yeah, they call those D I N. Are you talking about on an airplane? Yeah. Like, airplane is all Bluetooth now. Oh, are they? Everything, yes, everything works off of your Bluetooth uh, or your earphones. You can well, use, still use your earphones and plug them in. Yes, you can. But no, because it's it basically you every the screen is in front of you. Um, you're not you're not even using a screen anymore. You're not. You're using your phones and your tablets. And you're using their system, and it takes over everything. And you right, have to log. Right, you have to log in and do all of this right before they take off, because as long as you still have Wi-Fi, you can connect to them, and then you're into their system. And all everything is from your like your headphones, your blue, own Bluetooth. Uh, there's no more jacks to plug into except a USB to charge your phone. Uh, and that's it. They do have one tent underneath the seat, but as far as connections, and this was, um, I flew last, what, I can't remember, in the fall of last year. I'll be flying again in March, so. Tom, where are you going? I'll be going uh, out to Seattle. Going I'm to Seattle going on airlines. What airline? Uh, Delta. Delta. So... I guess you could ask Delta what their requirements would be. Well, I can check with them, yes. But uh, it, it seems like uh, you guys were talking about uh, for hooking up a computer. And what I was going to be doing was uh, plugging in headphones to watch one of the movies on the seat in front of me, the back of the seat. Uh, remember, uh, uh, Tom, uh, that uh, uh, what he's talking about, your phone is a computer. Well, I understand that too, yes. So uh, basically you would uh, uh, be using it to get the audio, is what he's saying, through Bluetooth, uh, on your phone to your headset. So is your headset Bluetooth capable, Tom? No. No. So you'd, uh, have, you'd have to get another headset that was Bluetooth uh, uh, capable. That would be Bluetooth. Any Bluetooth, because you're going to team that Bluetooth up with your phone, because everything you're going to be watching, they don't have screens anymore. So you're going to be watching, anything you're going to be watching is off of their, basically their system, and you're logged into like Delta, whatever they call it, Delta One, let's say. You run and their app show you, for this. Right. You have to load their app. You have to make sure it's working before you take off, because once you take off, you're SOL. Because there's no way of you getting in to load it unless you buy internet. Right. Right. So, yeah, you don't want to get caught in that. My wife got caught one time when we were flying. And like I said, I mentioned you have to do it before. And uh, so, okay. she read her book. Well, my, my phone does have uh, an airplane mode, and I didn't know exactly what that was all about. And then, well, that what you do there is you put your phone in airplane mode when they close the doors. And the reason for that is because it's not going to make anything uh, to drain your battery. Because if it's constantly looking for Internet and it's constantly looking for Bluetooth or constantly looking for this and it's not going to find it, it's going to keep draining your battery. This way you don't drain your battery at all and you're only whatever you're doing is basically there. And it does save your battery. But like I said, they have everything you can plug in there, USB, for your battery to keep it charged. And that's in this, usually in the seat headrest in front of you. So, okay. bring, yeah. so make sure you get your charging cable with you with the phone. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you if you need it, yeah. Yeah, but well, I mean, uh, uh, he was talking about uh, watching a movie uh, that uh, is going to consume a good deal of uh, uh, the battery. I you bring a charger get too. What's that? Bring a charger. Right. Connect, or... connect your laptop, tablet, or smartphone to their in-flight network. Now, they use GoGo. So that means if you also have access to GoGo uh, connections, you can use all the GoGo in-flight stuff. 
All right, so Tom, you need to go to airborne.gogoinflight.com to set this set up your browser for it. Uh, just so you know, Tom, all I did was just put in the good old Google, uh, the search engine, and say Delta Airlines in-flight entertainment and see what it came up with and, and then came up with how to connect to it. Okay. Okay, yeah, you'll be able to, to access their website regardless of whether or not you purchase Wi-Fi. So you'll be able to use their app in-flight, but you'll want to have that like Rick said, load it on your phone before, before. you. Yes. Okay. Okay. When are you leaving, Tom? Oh, it won't be until uh, the end of July. Oh, geez. you got tons of time to work that out. Oh, yeah. by, by, July, to by July, you might have that implant already put into your body, so you don't have to worry about That's it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I yeah. doubt it. And Elon can make more money. Somebody's going to make more money. Well, he's got the implant. <laughs> but mine's got a short circuit in it, so it might not work. Well, you can always hope on that one. Maybe I'll make him a better man. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, the other thing, Tom, is... You know, you could keep an eye out for some ads for a cheap pair of Bluetooth headphones. They sell them for like 25 bucks. You know, well, you don't need anything special. Although I would recommend if you're going to buy any type of headphones that you're going to be traveling with that you should look for um, noise canceling. That would be optimum. But that could push you closer to $100 for something like that. Well, I don't travel enough for that. <laughs> well, yeah. But, you know, I use noise-canceling headphones all the time. I found them to be very beneficial. But I'm outside doing yard work, mowing the lawn, uh, snow blower, whatever. I put them on, tune out the world, and get my job done. Okay, well... What can I say? I live in a condominium. Don't need doing that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're not mowing the lawn, are you? And you're not using the snowblower. No. Nope. Okay, so I understand that. But he's working on his car. I don't do that either. <laughs> he doesn't drive his car. He doesn't have, have a one. car. You know, or you could find that you could possibly borrow a set from somebody. Look yeah, for used what? ones on eBay. But what are Bluetooth? Uh, Headphones look like what kind of connection or what do they have that like, they're wireless? Uh, they, well, they're wireless for uh, sure. They uh, charge up uh, usually through a USB cable. Um, it's got a battery life. The battery life uh, uh, varies depending on the quality and cost of the headset. Uh, so uh, some of them might only last maybe like a couple hours on a charge. And other ones uh, might last uh, uh, seven, eight hours or more. Okay. It all depends on the dinero. Yeah, sure. No, I understand that. Okay. Thank you. Tom, you should be able to get a good pair for under 30 bucks. 30 bucks? Under 30 from Amazon. I saw three of them already. Without, that, are, um, that are decent. Just Without, um, uh, that's with or without noise canceling? That's noise canceling. Oh, two, okay. Yeah. You could put a couple of links in the chat and, and see if he, uh, see what you can see. I don't okay. know if you can see. There's a pair of Bluetooth headphones right here. They go in your ear. Can you see that? Yeah, well, I, I see the, the one piece. Do they wrap around? Or just that piece, okay. That's it. Like yeah. a hearing aid type piece, okay. It just goes right in the ear. Tom, yeah, you see what's in my ear? Yes, I do. It's like what Rick's wearing. Okay. They're very That's, little things, and you know, mine. I have two of them. Those are the uh, Apple. I what do they call them? AirPods. See, yeah, you got the AirPods Pro. Tim has right. got uh, what is that bone induction Shots. one? Yes. Thing. 
Those cost a little more than 30 bucks. Well, yeah, but I got it uh, uh, during Black Friday sale uh, for under 100 Okay, yeah, but Black Friday is not... Well, you well, might have, hey, Amazon Prime Day is going to come up between now and when you right. fly. So, yeah. you, so you might as well just save your pennies and start doing your thinking. So, you know, here's, a, here's my holder for my headphones. It's the charger. That's it. This has a little USB-C port right yeah. here. It charges the battery pack in here, just like Rick is showing us there. His little thing for his AirPods. Of course, Apple AirPods are going to cost you significantly more than 30 bucks. Yes. Okay. So, so you could just... Um, you do you listen time. to music much? Not much, no. No? I mean, you watch movies or... Well, yeah, a lot. Well, you could you you'd be surprised the quality of these things for even fifty bucks. That the sound quality is just phenomenal. Yes. Um, I mean, I, late at night, I just put in my my i what do you call them AirPods, AirPods. and I just look, look go to um, what is it? I can't even remember. You mean like Netflix or something to watch a movie? Yeah, not so much Netflix. I go to uh, the other one, YouTube, and, and, and watch okay. videos or something, you know, and even concerts or stuff like that. But the quality is is like the old days when you had the record player, you know. I mean, it, it is just phenomenal now. So yeah, well, I, I've uh, watched movies on using my phone with uh, Pluto. Okay. So if you don't want to disturb anybody, you put your, your earphones in, you know. Okay, and instead, I'll... if you go into your if you go into your settings on your phone, you'll see where it says Bluetooth. And when you turn Bluetooth on, it'll automatically connect. It'll today it just automatically connects to the devices. So oh, it's yeah. not a not a problem setting it up. Okay, I never understood what the Bluetooth was for, so I never touched it. It's well, Bluetooth, like Bluetooth, Bluetooth connects Bluetooth. to your car. It connects to your car. So, like, if you get in a car, I mean, if you get in a car and it has Bluetooth capability or AirPlay, uh, all that other whatever they call it, it'll automatically connect. So you're on the phone with somebody. You get in your car. You start it. Your phone automatically connects through your car. There you go. Now you don't have to do anything. You could just say, you know, hey, uh, you know, who, and they'll take care of everything for you. You can say any any one of the Hayes and the you know who's and uh, they it's amazing today technology. It'll you, tell you, you the air hear, pressure in your tires. Tom. You do hear a lot more in movies with the, with headphones than you do through the little speaker. So you yeah. hear a lot more stuff that you're missing in terms of content than the shows that you're watching. So uh, Tom, uh, even though uh, you're home, Bluetooth is just short range. Radio communications like Wi-Fi only at a lower uh, power level, and uh, as a result, it uh, uh, is also slower, but good enough for uh, uh, any audio you want to listen to, whether it's music, the audio from a video, or whatever the case may be. You don't lose uh, uh, any uh, uh, quality on that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I can see how with the uh, headphones, you're going to cut out the, the background noise because the plugs will be there. You'll only hear the sound that you're supposed to hear, not, you know, the, the noise of the cars going by or, you know, the, the furnace running or something like that in the room when you're watching movies. Well, sometimes right. uh, uh, that's not true because sometimes even with noise canceling it, it depends on the design of the uh, headsets because there's all different kinds. Right. What they were showing you were uh, uh, kind of like earbuds, only wireless through Bluetooth. And so the end result is uh, uh, the way they uh, function, you can still hear things around you so that you are alert to your environment, but hopefully it won't uh, uh, distract and uh, uh, detract the quality of the sound you're trying to hear. Okay. Now, if you get the whole over-the-ear type ones, 
those will block out almost anything if they're uh, good quality. Rick okay. is trying to show us another type of headphones. Hard to see that, Rick, with your background, but yeah, if you put it in front of you, between you and your background, we'll be able to see it better. Well, you're bouncing. What are you on, a jumping jack or what? Mm -hmm. Trampoline? Oh, now it's sitting on his head. <laughs> I think that background does does. Yeah, you need to take out that background imaging for us to see better. Yeah, a lot of times that uh, causes more problems uh, trying to uh, see people uh, when you need to than it's worth. Okay, we solved Tom's problem. He's getting ready for a flight. He needed Bluetooth headphones. He didn't know what to use. Uh, there you go. Lots of options. And between now and uh, uh, whenever that flight is, you got yeah. plenty of time. You can, uh, uh, like uh, uh, they recommended, uh, 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 wait and uh, um, get it through Amazon Prime Day, which uh, is two consecutive days. And a lot of times they give damn good uh, discounts. Almost like Black Friday. Reasonably priced. Yeah. So uh, I, I would be looking, what ones am I interested in? Then when Prime Day comes up in June, I think it is, uh, then you would uh, uh, take and uh, start looking at those specific ones you are interested in and what one gives you the uh, most bang for the least bucks. Yeah. Okay. And there's different types, you know, there's over the ear, there's in the ear, there's, uh, you know, the kinds that have, that go around your neck and then have two little gizmos that go in your ear. I mean, there's all different types. And I mean, the noise canceling ones are the best though. And then you can use it for a phone just like this. Mine is using it for the audio portion of this. Right. Okay. If you go to Best Buy or Micro Center, either one, both of them have displays of a, a number of different kinds. And you can talk to the people, uh, uh, but uh, he doesn't have a car, so uh, he has to have a, a relative of his take him to uh, those places to see the stuff. Um, when did you say you were going, Tom? It would be June? probably, I think it's uh, July... 27th. Oh, okay. So the Prime Day has not been announced as far as I could see. Yeah, but it usually um, is but like it, it, it may be somewhere like July 11th through and 12th. Okay. I thought it was uh, be in June. Wednesday. So it's going to be pretty close for you. You have to order it and have it come to you next, the next day if you're a Prime member. If you're not an Amazon Prime member, then don't worry about it. Well, I am a prime member. Uh, uh, okay. Even if he wasn't a prime member, odds are he'd probably get it within three, no more than four days. Right. Uh, who here is not a prime member in this group? I, I used to be, okay, and I gave it up. Gave it up. Okay. Bob, you don't buy enough? I, I do buy enough, but uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, I I have a city card, which I has reward points, and uh, so that cuts back on the benefit of doing Prime. I I just never got myself set up for it. Why? Okay. What does your city card have to do with Amazon Prime? I actually with Prime I could still get the points and I could have yeah. the discounts. So you're right. Well, when you. Well, with or without Prime, if you buy on Amazon, you can use that credit card to pay it, and you'll get your points from the credit card company. Yeah, I understand. That's why I, that's why I was saying, Rick, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, with or without Beata. Prime, it doesn't matter. You're, right. you're still getting your points. Yeah. Beata, why, why aren't you on Prime? I have a niece that's on Prime, so if I need anything, I, I, she'll do it. But I don't need a lot, so... And as okay. long as he'll do it, hey, no big deal. I understand. 
Uh, the credit card wise, I don't know if it, uh, the members know that if you use a Discover card, Discover, not necessarily on Prime, but if you own a Discover card, Discover cards rack up points themselves by purchases you've made. And you can use those points to purchase stuff directly on Amazon. On Amazon. So if you have $24 in points, you can use all $24 to purchase a widget or whatnot. Hmm. I do that all the time. Same here. Constantly um, using points. Now, I, yeah. we also have the American Express business uh, card from Amazon, and you get 5% cash back on everything you buy. Okay. So no matter what you're buying, you still get 5% cash back on top of that. And that's, and oh, and what's great about it, it's an American Express card and no annual fee. Hmm. Hmm. You get That's some the, streaming service with the Prime membership also. Yeah, yes, you, you get did. Amazon Prime, yeah, which is Amazon Video and uh, Amazon Photos. You know, they have the, the best photo to store your photos right there. Uh, all your photos for free. It's all included. How much space do you get? Unlimited. Oh, that's quite a bit. And then everything, it automatically downloads to everything you're doing. I like that. That's pretty good. Anyone here use Amazon to store their photos? Just Rick. Yeah, I've, I've, I've used it before, yeah. It's okay. Okay. Anyone else want to talk about Bluetooth or Amazon or Prime or Discover Card <laughs> credit cards? Discover Card is good at Woodman's. They're going to what? I said Discover Card is good at Woodman's. Oh, yeah, Woodman's. Yes, because you, yes, it is. All right. Um, well, I guess we could go on to our topic tonight if no one else has any questions. Jim, you got any questions for us before we jump in? No. Not tonight. Okay. All right. Um, so, yes. Actually, Although I came in late, I kind of dozed off. I was going to be early. But I I did okay. have uh, something going on, which I, is kind of a continuation of I've been changing around partitions and moving partitions around. I, well, anyway, I had some interesting things happen with Linux that caused me to do some uh, reinstalling there. But with regard to Windows... I I want to share something on my screen. I think I can find it. I let me just uh, see see whether I've got the document handy. I um, this may take just a minute to find. I may not have it handy here. Oh, okay. Let's see whether... Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to skip that. I, I'll i bring it up for uh, for tips and traps. But anyway, I, I was going to uh, show an image of something... That happened. I may be able to uh, to find online an image of it. I just you know. it has to do with what happened when I tried to I uh, transfer some files from Windows to I uh, an external drive, and I had a problem with the application data, a folder called application data. Mm -hmm. And it kept trying to copy over and over and over and over. And I would like to show what that looks like. Hmm. So bear with me just a second.
Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's gonna take a little while to. I can almost. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be able to quickly find what I need to find. Well, Bob, uh, hey, while you're looking for it, can I point yeah. something out that I had a problem with here? Go yeah. Ahead. Okay, uh, it'll be rather quick. You guys may know all about it, but uh, something I've learned on my own tonight. I was having a, a heck of a problem with my wireless mouth, or mouth, mouse, and uh, Moose? I thought it was a battery problem. Mm -hmm. I got the batteries out. They're rechargeable, so I put them in a charger. They were 100% charged, just like I thought they'd be. Put it back in. Still, the mouse was having trouble trying to move around. It would just jump around every once in a while. And... And I'm just scratching my head. What it could be the problem with this? Well, it turned out, rather than talking about all the different things I've tried to do, it turns out that the uh, the receiver end that's plugged into the, the laptop was right next to the uh, the external drive plug-in. And that was blocking the signal. Ah. So I took the receiver out from there. Actually, what I did was pulled out the the hardware, the external drive, and bingo, it worked fine. So I put the external drive back in, took the receiver out, plugged it into a, an extended port in back of the machine, and everything works fine. Mm -hmm. So you guys may know all about that kind of stuff, but I you know, tripped over that and figured I'd at least mention it to you. How old is that uh, mouse, the wireless mouse? Oh, I don't know. Um, probably nine, ten years. Well, now you'd be surprised because the new ones are all Bluetooth. Oh, okay. Yeah, instead of and, using Wi-Fi. Right, and if you were to have that kind of a problem, it's usually the battery that causes that, or you just hit the reset button underneath the mouse, right. and it'll reset and some of the uh, Bluetooth mice, instead of having uh, batteries that you have to uh, uh, recharge uh, uh, externally and or use Appalin type batteries, they have a battery built in. You just uh, use a USB cord, uh, plug it into a, a USB port and into the mouse, and it charges it up while you're using it. And then yep. you disconnect the uh, cable uh, uh, later on after it uh, appears to be charged and go from there. As a, uh, well, I've, got, I've got both of those. And one is hooked to uh, the laptop and one to the desktop. And the one that's uh, hooked up to the desktop is, has got the, uh, the, the reset buttons on the bottom. And it's got the port in front to plug in for recharging. I've gone through all of that, and that's the newer mouse that you're talking about. Well, if it, yeah, but is it hooked to, uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, laptops, uh, uh, phones, and tablets have Bluetooth built in for a very, very long time. It used to be an option. But uh, uh, desktops don't have Bluetooth unless you buy a... Uh, USB adapter, and I happen to have one around here somewhere. I uh, can't find it. Oh, here it is. Uh, this is in a little plastic bag, but it's a USB uh, 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 5.0 dongle. You plug it in just like the Wi-Fi mouse dongle, but it's strictly Bluetooth. It would uh, work with any uh, uh, desktop and uh, allow you to use a Bluetooth mouse to talk to the desktop. But otherwise, you'd have to uh, hook the Bluetooth mouse up to the laptop because it has uh, Bluetooth built in. You, you, it may be off. You may have to turn it on, but it should work. And then you pair up the mouse with the Bluetooth and use it. Okay, and I'd have to say that it's like that in both cases. I have the 
the uh, adapter you have in that plastic bag on both machines, the okay. laptop and the desktop. Okay. So well, if it's Bluetooth, then that's fine. But uh, 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 usually you don't get any uh, um, interference like you do with the old Wi-Fi mice. Wi-Fi mice, uh, uh, you're talking different kind of radio wave, and uh, uh, a lot of things can cause interference, including microwave ovens. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bob? Hey, I'm back in business. I found what I was looking for online. Okay. All right. Good thing. So uh, now I can present this as here's what happened, and we can I uh, play a little game of guess what this is all about, and then if nobody guesses, I can I I can tell people what I found out very briefly. I what I want to do is first of all bring this up. Okay. So what I'll do is try a share screen, and what I'm going to do is share this guy. This is what I saw. I, I was working in Linux, and I was using, I was determining what the size of the various files is, whether there were large files I could delete. And Linux was seeing nested application data folders. Hmm. And I, I didn't do anything in Linux to try to get rid of any of that. I was just getting rid of other uh, large folders and mostly videos. Uh, but when I went back to Windows and started trying to back up some data by copying, all of a sudden I was going, I, I was seeing application data, application data, application data, application data, and the file copies wouldn't go through. I, and it, it isn't totally endless. There is a limit to how many of these nested application data folders will show up. Now, the teaser about this is, uh, I'm going to stop the share. What do you think is happening when you see that application data folder? By the way, it's hidden, and it's a system file. Uh, a system folder, rather. Okay, Sanford has a guess. It's something I ran across years ago, and I don't know if this is your problem, but when you have so many folders that are nested upon themselves, you're going back, you're going beyond the 256 bit word length that's permitted in the file system. I don't yeah. know if that's what you ran into or not, but you have application data is X number of characters, and I didn't count the characters, let's say they're 15. Yeah. And you've got that so many permutations down. Each one of those puts the puts as becomes part of the file name. So you got application data slash application data slash application data all the way on down the line. And if you add, if you numerically count how many characters are there, you may be exceeding your 256 that Windows was limited to, or whatever the count is. It used to be 256. I don't know what it yeah. is anymore. This may not be your problem. But that's just my thought. Well, that is something that will happen. But the question is, since I didn't create these folders, how did they come into existence? What's really being seen here? It's part of the user's uh, uh, library of functions that give you uniqueness uh, per user on the system. And they are system folders that normally are not backed up or uh, uh, other than a general backup of the whole system. Uh, the individual contents are not accessed and copied from uh, uh, one drive to another drive. Now, did you see how many folders were nested inside of each other? There's a lot. There aren't that many users. Right. Why does it keep going in this cycle of creating nested folders? I think it and has maybe to... Maybe somebody else might like to try to get uh, Greg in on this. I think uh, uh, it has to do with each occurrence of your attempted copy 
and it's trying to copy everything down at the root level of folders and their content and somehow it wraps itself around by making a new app data subfolder and then another subfolder and another subfolder based on how many times you keep trying to do the copy. Okay, first of all, these nested folders don't take up any actual disk space. Right. None. The reasoning, uh, the reason is actually this. I, there was in Unix and Linux something called a symbolic link or a symlink. Mm -hmm. Your my uh, your folders in Windows that are my documents, my videos, etc. per user, and app data now are actually links. Mm -hmm. They aren't real folders. But in older Windows XP era, there was a different name, and it occurred only once in the system, and it was under program data and it was called application data. Uh, it was also one of these links. So in order to reconcile the new links with the old links, a special kind of link was created. It's called a junction. And a junction exists only in the NTFS file system and only in Windows. Nobody else has it. Normal programs are not supposed to be able to access this junction. So they don't do something called traverse. They don't go through that junction, thus creating a loop. They skip it because they don't have access. There's security permissions involved. And that's a trick that was made up because this whole idea of having a junction was an ad hoc response to a backward compatibility problem in Windows. And the result is, if the security permissions some way, somehow change, maybe you have some partitioning software that tries to move or resize the partition, or uh, maybe something else happens. But anyway, all of a sudden, this junction is now visible to the modern programs they don't know to skip it. And the result is, if there's something that points from application data to the user app data, and if within the app data slash local, there's something that points back to application data, you've created a loop. And uh, if you don't traverse the junction in the first place, if it's always skipped, you won't get the loop. And it is one of the worst pieces of programming that was ever done. But Microsoft won't admit it was a mistake. They retain it to this day. And it's the only way you've got compatibility, which some businesses still need, all the way back to the old Windows XP 16-bit, 32-bit programs. And the old FAT32 and FAT16 file systems. So it's both the file system, which actually has this kind of a junction, and the operating system, which uses it functionally. It's not used by modern Windows. But if you ever have a program that is pointing toward application data as a folder, uh, that program needs to be redirected. <laughs> so uh, I took out... Uh, there were fo there were folders. Uh, they turned out to be in the user documents folder, not my documents, but the actual documents folder. Somehow there got to be this link that that pointed back to the application data junction. That's what I don't know how it happened, but it did happen, and those links had to be removed. I don't think any program, even an older program, would need them at that location inside a user's documents. But how they got there, I don't know. I used Minitool for the resizing. 
uh, a mini tool uh, partition uh, wizard. But there may have been other things that happened when I was doing things with Linux. Maybe things got copied in there that shouldn't have been, because Linux cool. Linux will treat any symbolic link just the same way as any other. It doesn't respect any permissions. Whereas in Windows, these uh, junctions won't be copied. But anyway, if you end up with anything like this and the permissions allow Windows to see it, if you're copying and you pass through that junction, you're going to have uh, this thing happen. So anyway, that's what I ended up spending about two or three days figuring out what is this and how do I fix it. And so were you able to make it smaller? Because I saw it was like 120 gigs. Uh, those aren't real size. Those sizes, uh, if you were using something like, oh, let's say WizTree in Windows, right. it won't include the junction when it tries to find out how much space is taken up on, on the disk and by each folder. If you use Linux, it will count them, and it did. And it thought there was like several terabytes of disk space used because these folders have a size that's equal to all the contents they point toward. And it just keeps accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. So for the benefit of my sanity and of Linux, I had to get rid of these recursive uh, links these links that point back on each other. I don't think I did anything that would cause any problems with any Windows program. Mm -hmm. I just simply made sure that Linux would not think that these folders were real and it wouldn't keep on thinking there was more space used and neither Windows nor Linux would have a problem. I, when you're copying from one drive to another or one partition to another, like when you're using a backup drive for data, I, that's where it comes into this problem that if a Windows file copying program, like File Explorer, for example, starts to see the, the junction as not access denied, it will go through this cycle and the copying will be slowed considerably. It will then reach the file uh, path, the path length, uh, limit that Sanford alluded to, the size limit. I, instead of crashing, I, File Explorer and most decent file copying programs will simply uh, start to ignore. The, they will ignore the condition where it's an illegal file length, and they will go, oh, now I'm supposed to stop trying to copy this and continue with the rest of the copying. But by that time, it's going through all these cycles, and it took a long time because it thought it was going through maybe a couple of terabytes of files before it finally explodes and crashes. <laughs> and then it goes, oh, I wasn't supposed to do that. And it goes back to doing what it's supposed to do. I think TerraCopy can be tripped up this way. Yeah. Um, I ran into the problem of the file name blanks and subfolder, folder, subfolders, folder, subfolder permutations that were uh, caused problems on copying folders over or pro, uh, files. Uh, specifically, I ran into that with photos because it was a trend. Um, like when I was running the photo club is you'd give the photo a name that was particular. This is, you know, photo taken at the uh, prominence village at November 23rd, blah, blah, blah. And you give all this extraneous information, including F stops and whatever you want to put in to the file name. Yeah. And you got this long, but big ass file name. And then you have many subfolders in there. And when I tried to copy that over, it failed. And I would never get the file or it get truncated or the name would get bastardized or something. It, I was running into this problem quite a bit where I lost photos because 
the folder names or the uh, file names just got too long for Windows to handle. Yeah. You do have to be careful. It used to be back in the days of DOS, you knew you had to be careful and you had to have eight character file names, nothing more. Right. Right. Because it was limited to nine characters and one of them was a parody bit. But I, th I, I don't know if it's 200, 256 characters is still the limitation or not. Uh, maybe somebody could look that up while we uh, get a chance. But the file name includes where it is in subfolders. So yeah. if you have C colon backslash root, you know, application data, backslash application data, keep going, and then a long file name, you're going to lose that file. It will never copy because it's too long. Yes. Uh, this is one reason why if you really want your data to get backed up correctly and if you want to preserve your data, you don't really want to go more than about eight layers deep in Windows, and even that's pretty risky. Yep. And that's because of long file names. Or you can make sure your file names are short, but you still don't want to go more than eight layers deep. Yeah. Now, I routinely violate that, but <laughs> that's only on my backup drives. Uh, it's your equipment, your stuff. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, but I think I'm going to be a lot more conscious of that from now on, now that I realize things can happen. And can happen. Uh, the thing is, uh, how these permissions got changed in the first place and how links to the application data junction got put in where they didn't belong, that I don't know. I think it might have had something to do with the repartitioning software. It might have had to do with using these NTFS uh, file systems under Linux, various other things may have occurred. But okay. in any event, the, the solution was pretty obvious. Get rid of the links that were causing the uh, loopback. Right. Okay, let's go on to our new subject. Our topic for tonight, games we play. Now, I was kind of hoping that we'd have some big game players in this group here. And uh, I'm still hoping that those of us that are attending tonight at least play one game somewhere um, on their machine. And I'm not talking about playing, you know, uh, first person shooters and, you know, really high tech games. I'm talking as simple as solitaire, as simple as online poker as simple as any online gaming, gambling, whatever, that's what those of us that don't do it, which is many of us in this group, don't know how to do it. Don't do it at all. We've kind of moved, we've moved away from there. I don't, I have not played solitaire on my machine in years. Uh, I'm sure Tim is part of that group and, and, and the rest of us. So I see hands up. Okay, Tom. Okay, I can say that the only game that I've played on my phone computer, okay, is Sudoku puzzles, and that's what I do. Sudoku. That's what I do when I sit in the doctor's office waiting forever. <laughs> okay. And is that a an app that you downloaded? Uh, yes, it is. And, it's, and it's is it free? You know, it's it's a free one. Yeah. Then are you? What platform are you on? Are you on? Uh, are you on Android or iOS? Uh, Android. Android. Okay, so you went to the what's it? The Google Play Store, and yep. you looked up what? What's the name of this program? I just looked up Sudoku and found it that way. Okay. You know, it's, I looked out there for Sudoku. I looked for free, and bingo, found one. Found a couple, but. You know, I, I didn't go into any special looking. I just found one that was free and started playing. And luckily, you have it on your phone, so we can't really see you using this. I was kind of, I'm you sorry know, that, about that, that, but that's that was what we were kind of hoping for is that people will show us exactly what they're doing, where they got it, how they do it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, is there a lot of ads in this app? No. 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 
since it's on the phone, it's just a, a little puzzle you're pay, playing in the background, and there's nothing else really to it. It's a waste okay. of time in solitaire, but that's kind of kind of that's, all to it. So that's the one game you play is Sudoku. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you, Tim. I haven't played in God only knows how long that, uh, uh, but generally I had uh, uh, two games that I might uh, uh, play once in a blue moon. Uh, one is Mahjong, and depending on the uh, version you get your hands on, they can have quite a few different puzzle layouts, and all it is is a Chinese tile game that uh, uh, puts the tiles in uh, different uh, general shapes of piles. And uh, uh, it may go three, four uh, levels high of uh, uh, pyramid-style uh, tiles. You have two pair uh, of each type of tile, and you're trying to uh, uh, do both uh, 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 of one pair to remove them from the puzzle, you get credit for that. But the idea is to get down to the point where you've got all the tiles matched up, you've won the game. If you uh, uh, get stuck uh, uh, by the fact that some of the tiles were a little too hidden and you couldn't uh, uh, make all the matches, some of the games allow you to uh, reshuffle the uh, remaining tiles to see if you can win the game. But uh, uh, I haven't played that in a long time. The other game that I play uh, at times is uh, Dungeon and Dragons original Unix version uh, from I think 1970 something or 1980 something. And it was uh, ported over to uh, DOS and Windows. It looks like a DOS character-based game. And you're just uh, uh, a, a potential dragon slayer looking for treasure and stuff like that. And see if you can make it out alive with uh, the certain things uh, uh, in your possession. Those are the only two games I uh, uh, generally have played uh, since... Uh, Probably oh, 12 or more years, I had a uh, Xbox 360 that I was playing quite a bit, and I was staying up extreme hours, sometimes uh, uh, to 4 a.m. in the morning. And uh, uh, there's nothing else to do during the night uh, uh, to speak of, so playing the game, you just got engrossed in it, and the time just disappeared. Okay, so um, Dungeon and Dragons is the role-playing game, right? And Maj Mahjong is a board game, right? Right. So I was kind of thinking along the line in this discussion here that we'd be doing like board games and simple card games, um, gambling games. N Dungeon and Dragons is more um, a little more in depth. You know, and again, it's a role-playing game. It's not really what I was thinking the, the, the group would be going into, but I appreciate that. Um, and I myself have not played Mahjong ever. My mom used to play Mahjong all the time. Rick, do you remember mom playing Rick's and Gross? Yeah. Mom used to yeah. every week. Yeah. My wife plays it. Your, your wife, wife plays, plays it. it, okay. So it still is a, a very very big um, very big up here in, in our area. Yeah, uh, Beata, you play mahjong? I haven't in ages. I, I remember how to do it. It's been a long time since I've played that one. Uh, have you have you ever tried to play it on the computer? No. Okay. Well, see on uh, uh, the computer, uh, you have some mahjong games that are a simple pyramid. But there are versions out there that may have a dozen or more different layouts. <clears throat> and each layout has a differing degree of difficulty to win the game. Right. Beata, what games do you like to play? 
Well, I haven't lately, but I've been playing. I played slots, quick hits slots. on TV. They had uh, um, a commercial for it, and I tried it, and I played it for quite a while. But then I got kind of tired of it. But it was fun when I was playing playing it. Now the slots. Did you? If you won, did you physically win something, or is it just a yay? It just the. I think the one I was doing, I, it had something to do with Las Vegas. And okay. I think it was somewhere, but I wasn't playing for a trip or anything. I was just playing for the games. And But okay. I think you could do, I mean, um, a discount on um, um, staying there and things. I'm not sure because I was just interested in playing the games. And because uh, I like, um, it was quick hits. And then, but they had the different ones there, so you could pick the different ones and play. And I mean, uh, to start up, they give you X amount of points to play with. And then the the thing is, I never understood. That's why I was wondering if anybody understood. Uh, <laughs> he's got. Um, you, you can buy buy in there, and I don't. You, you're not getting anything back. So I never understood why you would buy points. Uh, to get nothing, but that's why I was thought maybe if somebody else would know. Uh, maybe I am getting something. Same thing with it. Candy Crush. Well, then I've that's got true. Same thing with that. Candy Crush and all the other games. People are infatuated with it. They get hooked on it. And they buy more points. They need points. They buy them. Oh, I'm getting ten thousand points for a dollar. What's a dollar? Wait till the end of the week, and it's eight dollars. Now multiply that. Well, that's one know, cup of coffee these days. <laughs> and depending on how you want to term games, there are some AI program applications. You can use them while you have some points and uh, uh, only so many points per day. But if you want to continue on when you've expired all your points, then you have to pay some kind of a fee to get more points and continue using the application. Sure. So, Beata, you would play slots. Did you have a preference? Like, how many reels did you play? Was well, it it's the regular, like, you know, like you have been at the casino. They're, they're regular um, machines, and um, so there are five rolls across, I mean, um, the different ones. So, um, but I, I like the last, kids. When was the last time you went to a casino? And play uh, two weeks ago, I go okay, once so, a month. Okay, so your regular casino slots are not regular casino slots anymore. There are so many ways to play. It's it's nuts. You could play, you know, six reels going, you know, this way, and you got so many rows going this way, and you're playing who knows what zigzags on there. You're probably a you're probably an ace at it. No, I'm not. You went along? I'm not lucky, but I, I like I like going to the casino. I have X amount. I mean, I don't go over what I bring. Matter of fact, I even bring some of my own back. But uh, it would be nice to bring some of the casinos back. But yeah, I mean, it it it's fun. I like the slot machines. Okay. Thank but you. The thing too um, is. And like I said, playing the game on the computer or on my phone to pay for something that I'm not going to get anything back, forget it. So I'd rather go to the casino. If I lose my money, I lose it. But I have a, um, you know, um, I, I can win money. I mean, hopefully if I was lucky, I could win money. But when you're playing on the computer and that, I, I said, you know, no, forget that. Beata? That's something you, else. This, Rick, Beata, Rick, you, what are you showing us, Rick? Uh, Rick is showing us something. I don't know. Ten. Just a game. Just a game. It's a different. It's another video. It's another video. Right. Um, yeah. Slot machine. You know. You know. You, you know what I've learned, Beata. What I do is when I, if my points ever get low, because you know they're always starting you out with a million points, and uh, you know, of course, when you get low, then you have to buy points. But you, I just get out of that game and wait a couple days, and guess what? I've got points back again. And it's like they don't know who you are. Uh, know. Sometimes, too. Though, um, well, like I said, I can't remember now because it's been, it was last year that I played it. Um, um, 
I think every day they would give you so much. So well, that they, they, they keep you going. Right. So, I mean, you, you get that down, you quit, and then the next day you come back and they, they'll give you a little more. Yada, you say, uh, uh, why would I uh, give them some money when you're not going to get anything back? The key is all this is entertainment to entertain you. What is that entertainment worth that's helping you kill time? But I can do that with my uh, solitaire games on my computer. I'd rather do that than I'm not losing any money. Well, I can uh, sit here and twiddle my thumbs, and I have wasted no money. <laughs> Beata, for every five people like you, there's one person, and I just pulled the number out of the air, there's one person that's willing to pay because their time is more valuable. And the, the wanting, the need for gratification is more important than the money is. Right. So they feel they need to buy those points to get to that next level, which is like what Candy Crush does. You, you get stuck at a level, you, can, you keep playing it, playing it, and playing it, and you can't get anywhere, and you feel the only way I can get out of it is if I buy or pay a quarter or whatever, which is very penance, it's a little, not a lot, but you're willing to pay that little bit amount of money to get to that next level because you're you're tired of waiting. Mm -hmm. So, but you have the um, have the strength, if you will, to to wait it out, to keep playing it, or just say the heck with it. It's not that important. Right. Right. Okay. So, uh, Bob Promick, Bob, what do you play? I actually do not play games. I At all. Have, I have no interest in wasting my time that way. If I want to waste a little time, if I have time to kill, I'll be watching some TV shows, which tend to pile up on my DVR, or I'll try to do something, uh, do something new on my computer. I right. mean, that might be something like a game, but I, uh, you know, playing around, experimenting with uh, computers, and the reward for that is I, well, I. I gain new skills, and I gain new things that I can do with the computer, and I can also uh, stump people with, uh, I bet you didn't know this, <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> I don't actually make money off of knowing more than other people the way uh, a technician like Tim can do legitimately. But, well, you uh, know, the, I, this was the, the reason for this subject today is because many of us don't play games. We're too serious about our computers, and we just don't spend the time playing a game on there. So I thought this was a good subject. Or you're Terry so Boyd. busy, or you're so busy, you haven't got time to waste uh, uh, killing time with a game. Right. Terry. It, yes. Terry, what games do you play? You have to unmute yourself. Uh, oh, solitaire, uh, you know, I take a break or whatever, um, and I've tried, uh, like, bridge or chess, uh, it's, Ooh, it's okay, chess. but, uh, you know, two-player, so, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm not into the, you know, kids' games, and you know, I like my daughters or whatever. Is, is solitaire still free on your PC? Yeah, there's several versions. Yeah. I thought it was something you had to well, do. I, I keep I keep MS uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, MSN uh, MEC uh, on most of the time. You know, because it, it's always got uh, interesting articles from magazines that they put in there. You know. Well, let's see. Yeah, I play. I, I play that. I mean, they got all kinds of. Solitaire, but I just play the regular. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, sure. So yes. So I um, I just called up the. I mean, I, I, I know I know how to cheat, so I win all the time. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you, you you go from the top back instead of going, you know, bottom forward. You know, you can win every time. Most, <clears throat> most of the no, most of the simple yeah, there's ones times. are free, and then if you want to play more complicated ones, they're they're available too. But some of those want to charge you money for using them. 
No, I don't. I, I never pay for anything. If it's not free, then it's not worth playing. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, 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 uh, you know, take a little break, you know, try something different. Down at the bottom there is uh, Mahjong. Yeah, I played my. I used to, I used to play, used to play my genre a lot. Just it's, it's a great time waster. Yeah, it's even it works, it works really good. Works really good with the new phones when you got nothing better to do. Is mm -hmm. my wife does jigsaw too. puzzles quite a bit. On uh, she uses the iPad a lot. She does. She probably does two or three jigsaw puzzles a day. Plus she got candy. Correct and. Two or three other ones, and she does. She also does Sudoku on there sometimes, along with the paper version. She also does. Well, uh, Terry uh, jogged my memory in that uh, uh, I used to uh, uh, play a game. Oh, it's been 15, 20 years since the last time I uh, touched it. It was called Battle Chest, and it uh, I had either uh, uh, knights. Uh, uh, or it had uh, monsters like, and uh, uh, when you uh, did your uh, chess moves, uh, it would show battle chest of uh, uh, the character slaying your other piece. And uh, it was kind of uh, humorous. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, uh, and I was surprised uh, how well it played on what we would call a uh, uh, real antique uh, old equipment. But that was uh, uh, something I used to have. Oh, God. It, it's been so long since I uh, uh, ever had it uh, play. It's not funny. I used to play, when they came out with computers, the old Texas instruments, uh, you know, that you'd use on a TV set, uh, you should do Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, they, uh, you know, you set the computer, you hook up your TV. You know. Right. Like an Atari uh, 2600. Texas Instruments, yeah. Yeah. As an example. You used to play Way baseball back. with Atari. Yeah, we go. Uh, so, back. Harry, since you chimed in, Harry, what games do you like to play? I said, I use Bajong. As a time waster on the phone sometimes. Otherwise, I do. But I usually do about four crossword puzzles a day, and I don't know very there are other things. I don't, I don't mess around. Once in a while on the phone, I may pick up a, something besides some other game that might be on there. But they most of them are kind of useless on the phone. Mm -hmm. Jim? Otherwise, I usually spend too much time doing minor maintenance things on the pieces of junk around here I call computers. <laughs> well, I got lots of those. I can waste the time at the wazoo. Me too. If I... Jim, you were going to say? Oh, um, I'm, I'm sort of in Bob's category, I guess. Um, I will play... Solitaire occasionally when I'm waiting for my pizza, um, but I I get fed up because the the particular game I play seems to be wasting more of my time in between games with stuff that I'm not interested in, so I tend not to do it as much. And when I go to the doctor's office or someplace, I always take a book, so I do a lot of reading if I have. When I have spare time to waste. Okay. Well, we kind of went through the group here, so that the so we have Mahjong, Solitaire. Um, uh, give me some help. What else did we chat Lots. about? Sudoku, poker. Nobody plays slots. Poker. Slots. Yes, yeah, slots. Usually, when they have their poker game, it's all like those slot games. Usually have. A million games in there that right. you could play. You know, it's, it's it's just so many different things. Yeah, you pick the ones you like, and then you know the, right. the, those. Right. I have a couple no, no. apps that I bought that you had to buy back in the day. Um, like well, I'm not. Oh, Angry Birds. Oh, Angry that Birds. Was, yeah. yeah, that was the big crave, and of course you had to buy the better version, and I did that. And there's another one called Skee Ball Plus. 
and I think I bought that one too. That's a, I've never bought any. Oh, hill climb. Yeah, there's like maybe three or four that I actually did buy as an app. Okay. I uh, used to play Tetris. Yeah. And I heard there was a kid just recently broke broke the game. He completed Tetris and did, what is it, 10,000 moves. Wow. Yeah, he, huh. and I think he's 12 years old or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was a little kid, and he actually went past the 9,000... 999 and then it, it just froze that was it well this topic kind of ran up earlier than i expected i was hoping we'd have a few more people here to be able to cover this stuff so um anyone else want to add any game subjects in here i think this is a good thing to cover the, uh, I will say this, uh, and uh, uh, I would say this crowd, it doesn't apply to. Uh, but uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, used to uh, um, have most of the games uh, that most people played on consoles of some kind. Then they've moved to windows-based machines and a little bit to like linux and mac but it sounds like uh, uh, that trend is reversing back to consoles and that's because a console is dedicated to just doing game playing whereas a regular computer is designed for regular use besides playing games and unfortunately, sometimes the two clash with each other so that the game performance is uh, degraded by all the other stuff, including the operating system on a regular computer, bogging things down. Yeah, that would be more on role-playing games, first-person shooters, any of those. Not, right. not an issue with solitaire. Right. It, not an issue with, uh, Maybe you know, even. you know, playing slots or anything like that. It, the those things don't tax the resources like the the uh, role playing games do. Did anybody ever use uh, Wordly? What? Wordly. Wordly? Wordle. 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 Okay. What is it? It was a, a game that uh, was in the New York Times, and there are umpteen different variations now by various people. Uh, basically, you have five tries to uh, uh, figure out uh, a short word that might be like uh, uh, five to eight characters long, and uh, uh, with each try, uh, uh, you either get one of the characters that's in the word, et cetera, et cetera. And when you think you've got uh, 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 what word it is, you won the game. Oh, okay. Now, uh, did, I think you said that uh, New York Times owns this. Didn't they invent this or did they own it? I think they, uh, uh, somebody else, I think, created it, but they bought it. They bought it, right? But, yeah, so, there was a there was a fellow in England who created this game, and uh, then he eventually was successful enough with it so that uh, the New York Times took an interest. They bought it from him, and uh, then he started developing some uh, new versions of it, right. new variants on it, right? And so uh, he's still doing this sort of thing. Okay, so here we have Wordle. And we, you have this matrix here of what five by six, yeah, five characters cross six down. But the, uh, the uh, uh, each line is uh, uh, another uh, uh, try. In other words, you only have a limited number of tries to guess what uh, uh, the hidden word is. Also, as you fill in the letters, you will get color feedback which gives you clues right. as to how close you are. All right, so I got, the, what do I got? A five-character letter name word across. I mean, I, I don't know how to play this thing. 
the, so you're talking a five character word and you're trying to uh, uh, guess in no more than six attempts what letters are in the hidden word and so far you've got nothing i don't think <laughs> well what is the hidden word i mean where do you i mean where is the, isn't there a clue uh, the yeah. clue is uh, as you type the letters in if you get a letter that's uh, uh, right you've got to put all five in and hit enter and it'll tell you which letters were in the word in the right position. So you're guessing to start with. Yeah, it's all guesswork. And you got six attempts to uh, uh, come up with the right answer. There was a, a, a one of our CCS uh, uh, meetings one time, I think, or some other meeting I attended that turned out to uh, uh, play a little bit of the game and the, uh, I think on the third try, I guess the word. Now, Sanford, where you're at now, none of your letters are in the, the actual word. Right. See, you know how to play this game. Uh, that's because a different user group, the open source user group in Natick, Massachusetts, has somebody who's really into this. Yes. All right. Well, this is the first I've ever played it. Literally the first. So I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, why don't you try A E I O U and see where they go? A E <laughs> I O U. You you already tried. You had a U out there already, but word not fun. See, that's not oh, a yeah, word. You have to oh. use an actual word. Oh, I didn't know you had to use a word. All right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you're uh, uh, using words to guess what letters are in the hidden word. All right, okay. so let's let's give up. Let's see how this sounds. Dandy. Okay. Download puzzle image. Whoop. You lost. Dandy. I don't know how this works, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right. Uh, if See? you had put in, uh, 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 say, uh, 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 oh, God, I, I just uh, uh, try to think of something. Something uh, like doggy, the D would have shown well, up somewhere. Well, yeah, if you had a, yeah, a, a doggy or something like that, uh, uh, you might have gotten the D. And then you, uh, your next try, you would try and get another letter besides the D. Yeah, what was it dandy, right? Yeah, if you got really oh. lucky, you would have started with maybe say no, the word candy. No, no, no. no. It, Put a G in there. Don't have D in there twice. Okay, you got a Y, and it's in the right position. There's also an N, but it's not in the right position. And you never put the same letter in twice. Uh, well, wasn't not, not initially at least. Well, yeah. All right. Well, I hear I did it. I did it wrong. Okay, so change the change the D. Get rid of the first D and make it handy. H A N. No, D's not in. Do it now. And N is not in the third position. Right. That's why I said the Y is in the right position. The N is in the word you're guessing, but it's in the wrong spot. So it's got to be mm -hmm. in one of the other three gray. Uh, letter areas. Try oh, the N is Nancy. Nancy. Try Nancy. H O N E Y. I'm sorry. There was no. two. What? The N oh no, that won't work. That's not good. Forget the N that. is not in the uh, yeah. third yeah. position. You want something that ends in N N Y. It ends in a Y. Yeah, like can you move? Answer. Can you move that in those letters over? Or once you put them, no, in, you can't. no. They're in uh, uh, the Y is in a fixed position. The end, you okay. have to uh, uh, try the mm -hmm. other three positions for that end. Well, can't you just move it over? No, you don't no. move it. You don't type it a in uh, the first, second, or fourth position. Don't do A wow. again. You can't do wow. A. Stop. Make A out of there. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> And no, D, you don't want there. D either. The ones that are grade, you don't want to use again. The I N, you want to move to another position. Yeah, the yeah. N has to be in the first, second, or fourth position of the word, 
and the word has to end with Y. I think crony, C-R-O-N-Y, is a word. Yeah, but you don't want the end in the third place. It's not in the third oh, place. All right, then there I moved it. That. Yeah. Second to the end. Uh, hey, there it is. Got three yeah. now. Oh, you three just got to guess place. the first two. Now you have to figure out what the first two letters are. Yeah. yeah, they're not irony. Irony. I uh, no, it isn't an R though. Stony, no. S T. Yeah, S T O N Y. Let's try that. You got, got it. it. <laughs> there you go. You can I figure it out. It only took about you five know. or six of us to get it. <laughs> well, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, the experience I had uh, one time uh, uh, when uh, uh, Whirly was uh, uh, demoed on a, a zoom meeting and i got it on the third one uh, like uh, uh bob just did yeah well uh, i didn't do it by myself <laughs> it's just one of these things uh, 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 and uh, uh this was a big craze i don't know how much of a craze it is anymore and there are tons of variations some of which are much more difficult than uh, uh whirly is and uh, there were actually uh, people who were saying, you know, like uh, uh, a daughter-mother combination uh, over the phone would check, uh, the daughter would check in with the mother and they would uh, uh, play Whirly uh, uh, while they were on the phone. <laughs> well, that makes sense. We, we have two guys at AARP Taxes who, when they first get there in the morning, compare notes on their progress on the order. So how do you start another one with the same thing? Um, so is this, is this a oh. game that you're basically playing with multiple people, or do you just, like, download the app? Uh, usually if it's uh, uh, multiple show. people, it's uh, uh, like the group we have here right now. It's usually uh, uh, one person... Uh, uh, Typing in suggestions, etc. Okay, I know you restarted. But the, now there are did. other variations of the game. That's already started a new one. You don't know what the word is yet until you start typing in and hit enter. But All right, give me something else, guys. I, if you want to enter in the word guard, G U A R D. Let's see what that does. Got uh, an R. The R has to be the first, second, third, or fifth character of the next try. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start out with an R. R A N D Y. It's an a. a. There's no A in there. There's no, no a. a or D. Don't do that. No A or D, right? I. Oh, I see. So the ones in gray probably are not being used at all. How about R E A C H reach? No A. A. The oh, a. not not an A. I. Uh, how about R on? Hmm. That taxes your head. That's R what this is R all e about. P. Uh, no, you don't really word. That might be. Try uh, 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 moving the, uh, the R to either the second, third, or fifth character when you uh, can't get it as the first. Well, F -L 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 F -L -O -U -R, F-L-O-U-R, flower. U-R. See whether that does anything. The R is probably in the wrong place. Hey, it is the R there. is uh, uh, in the right place now. And you got and an, an o, o that has to be the first, second, or fourth character of the next try, and the R must be at the end. How about choir? C H O I R. No. 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 Not. 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 No. The, no we no. can't. The C O is in the wrong place. Hmm. Oh. Well, then we won't use the C. No. Uh, you got to have an R at the uh, fifth position. Yeah, the R is at the end. And the O has to be uh, uh, first, second, or fourth position 
of whatever you try next. Or no, you try try minor M I N O M I N O R. Okay. Well, you still got the R. The O, it's got to be the uh, first or second character in uh, your next try. It's one of the first three. Oh, no, first, first two. two. Yeah, first two. First two, yeah. First two. Right. Other. O T H E R. Yeah, that's a possibility. Okay, I now know. you got the e R. We know and the O has to be the second position. Right. So you've got, yeah, like mother. Yeah. No, no. 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 Too many letters. Because TH is not working. And the M isn't in there either. O has to be the second character. No, o, o no has M. to be the no second T. character. And no you've M. got it in with ER. And there's no it has M. to be the second letter too. There is no M. And there's you got to have E R as the uh, fourth and fifth character. And the O has, has to be, be the number second two. character. O. O has to be number uh, two character, and you got to end with E R. No T. No. Okay. Well. No T. Let's see uh, what no it does. T, right, because T was not included in there. Hit enter. No, there's no T. There is no T. It's got to start, the second letter has to be, the first letter's got to be an R, then an O. No, no, and the first no. The letter is an R. Well, the R can repeat. Yeah. Yeah, right? but there must be two R's. Oh, no, it would have to show the no. R in the first position also. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, would. no, no, no. He's, you're right. You're right. Yeah, the E because and the, the R are correct. The R would right, have to show in both spots, and it's only the last. Yeah, yeah you cannot right. change the E R at the end. And no. the O has to be the second character because it's been in the uh, first, third, and fourth position. Joker. Right. Joker. Joker. Okay? Joker. No, no, no. J O K. Joker with a K. There you go. Well, you got oh, oh. the right uh, uh, three letters. You got one chance left for uh, uh, figuring out the first and third character, but you got to repeat the O E R in the same exact location. Poker, no. Pose, poser, P O S E R. There you go. That could be. You lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hour. 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 Oh. Hour. Wow. Now they Ooh. now they want ten dollars from you. Oh my god. <laughs> oh I because they brought I, you I, on. I would never have guessed cow. <laughs> because I brought you on, Sanford, I get an extra fifty dollars. That's that? right. You that's right. <laughs> right. Everybody gets a car. <laughs> so now we all learned how to play Wordle. Thank you, Tim, well, for bringing that up. And, and I'm interested in it now. Yeah, I, I never played it. Now I find it. It's a little. This is interesting. It can be get something. challenging. And like I said, there's umpteen variations, and some of them are real, real challenging. This is challenging enough just with five by six. <laughs> Somebody else uh, uh, mentioned. I don't uh, need it anymore. Although you can make the words longer, you can go or shorter. You could do four by six or whatever. Well, the other thing is uh, uh, that somebody brought up uh, a Sudoku. I think I tried playing it once, but uh, uh, it's all numbers, and you're trying to guess all the numbers in the right position in the uh, matrix. They give you so many numbers, and then you got to figure out the other missing numbers. Yeah, it, normally it starts out with nine, and and all it has to be nine in every direction <clears throat> when you when you finish it up to win it. Right. Yeah. 
So that's and that's they they the, they give you ones to start with, and they they have I think up to five levels that you can choose when you start, depending on where the numbers are. How they got the numbers laid out for you for a starter. Yeah, the way you the way you guys are having fun with puzzles and uh, all this stuff, I that's the kind of puzzling fun that I have with I. Uh, Figuring out what's going on when something happens on a computer. Absolutely. Yeah, well, me to too. me, that's mentally stimulating, and it's uh, mm -hmm. kind of amusing sometimes. Other times, if I'm under time pressure, it can get very frustrating. Yes, and <laughs> I'm in the same kind of boat. Only I also uh, 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 delve deeply into the hardware, and uh, uh, I make uh, <clears throat> somewhat of a silk purse out of a cow's ear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, with so hardware, you're play, always doing that. But, how do we play this game? What was that? How do we play this game? Sudoku. Okay, in the very center, where you've got the the nine and the eight above each other there. Well, I see in the center, I see right, three, right six, there. Yes. three, nine, right. six. Yep. Add them up. Five. Add them up. That's the magic number that everything has to add up to. Oh. I so see. nine plus eight, six eight, plus eight. three is 18. 18. So everything in a row has to add to 18? Yes. Okay, let me tell you this. Just go down to where you were with the 9, with the 396. Now go down below the 9, the empty box. Okay, the, the full, that empty spot right there. It can be, can be either a, a 2 or a 5 because the full box has only those two numbers missing. All right, let's try five. It has. Right. Oh, it has. That probably won't work. That won't work. No, it I, does work. It won't work because if you look over to the left, there's a two, because the line all the way across. Yeah, but Roy, no, no. I mean, you put your two there, and your twos are up oh, there. I'm sorry. And two would go in there. The two is. The two would be. The wrong number because it's got a two all the way to the left. You're right. No, nope. yeah, correct. no, two yeah. goes there. Yeah. Two, two goes, goes there. To, not oh. going the two. <laughs> right, right. The, yeah, the two. Oh, I know what I know what's going on. I didn't. And the five yeah. goes there. The, excuse me. Go back over to where you were. The darker box. Well, that's a two. No. You got to put you a two where the six is. Each each number is in. You can only have the box nine. All nine yeah. numbers. There you go. The numbers must be non-repeating. Right, in that and, box. All right. And then down the line, then the rows. Now the best way to do the next line is where you put the five in the very center. Do that line across. So you start with the through the three, two, one, five, seven, four, blank, six. And you look at the blanks. The one that the blank, okay, the one between the four and the six, you look at the whole line all the way across. What numbers are missing? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're missing an eight and a nine. So if you look straight up on the right, oops, you got out of that one. Straight up, you see there's an eight. So that blank, blank box cannot be an eight. It has to be a nine. Next to the six down there, yes, got to be a nine. Doesn't like that. I'm doing something wrong. No, I should have been, yeah, should have been it's, off and it's, to the does right. Does it vertically have to add up to 18, too? No, no, no. no the, the it doesn't add up. It's just, uh, it's what? just, uh, the numbers. Oh, there's there's a nine there already. Next year, next, well, yeah, that's the nine there. So what the heck did I say wrong with this thing? The numbers no, 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 run that. from, the numbers run from one to nine, and they have to be arranged in such a way that you don't have a repeating number in any row or any column. Right. Oh, this is hot, complicated. Eight or nine. Yes. It, so I'll go back can, to Wordle. I can figure that one out. Yeah. It can get very, very challenging. Well, how did you get two sixes in there? Why did you put a sec second six? How did you do that? Because I did that. I, I have a oh. habit of doing that, you know? Well, I, yeah, I in the same rest, square. So you, can erase, you need to erase that. Oh, okay. Click well, it can't. and do erase. Oh, erase. You did okay. that. Right. Now go to the, the space between the four and the six. 
Yeah, but you got to erase the seven. Either either has to be eight you got to get rid of your seven. Your seven is also. Eight. Those, no. uh, uh, those sevens that are in pink. That won't work. You have to erase that. That, that has to be either eight or nine, and it can't be eight. No. Because there's an eight above it. That It can't be an eight. It has to it has be, to be nine. nine. Now you go straight to the left, all the way across. All right. And that's got to be the, the eight. So that now you have all the numbers from one to nine right, across right. in a row. Oh my God! How do you guys do this matrix here? <laughs> it's challenging. It keeps your uh, brain functioning. All right, my brain exploded here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you still need. You cleaned up the mess. <laughs> <laughs> you still need to get rid of that seven. But anyway. <laughs> all right. So we we played with Sudoku. We played with Solitaire. Sudoku. And uh, we played with Wordle. This yep. has been very productive today. Um, <laughs> I think this was a good subject to cover tonight. Does anyone have any suggestions for subjects for next month? <laughs> Something no. different. Something so, different, yes. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, 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 just a, a side point. Uh, Terry uh, uh, made a suggestion for a topic. What was your general opinion? Oh, what was his suggestion? Suggestion was in an uh, email. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't pay attention to email. You want to bring it up? Not offhand, but okay. Uh, All right. I don't then. want to go digging for it right now. Okay. Uh, is was, anyone else? Here? It was within the last week. That much I can tell you. Okay. I, I don't have that email in front of me to be able to answer that question. Yeah. And the, uh, the rest of the group would not have gotten that email? Oh, it, that's correct. It was only sent to uh, me and Sanford uh, because we're group uh, hosts. Yeah, yeah. But oh. uh, the I think it had to do with, uh, if I remember right. It had to do uh, with his mental, wife's book. Mental health. Yeah, I think it was his wife's book that she produced. Could be. Okay. All right, uh, but that's besides the point. Uh, we need to stay on topic here. Well, I mean, it, it, it's a topic that he brought up. It's a, it is a topic he brought up. Well, double check with Terry because he asked me for Sanford's email. So Sanford may have not gotten that email. I, I uh, emailed uh, Terry uh, Sanford's new email. So uh, I don't know if Terry got it or not, if he was okay. looking for it. Well, I'll go dig for it and uh, uh, send it to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other last questions or comments for tonight's meeting? None? Well, all I can say is thank you very much for pointing out the, uh, the Bluetooth connection for headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Recording stopped.